So you're picking this up at the store and uh, you need to know how much, how much do you want to take to be effective. So if we're talking about a preventative dose, meaning you're not sick, um, what do you want to take for prevention? Anywhere between 1,200 and 2,000 milligrams per day. And actually, this I mentioned a research study earlier. It was this quantity that was given to el elderly patients that showed these results, right? So that 1,200 milligram a day mark showed reduced severity of symptoms, reduced length of time of illness, and re reduction in the recurrence of illness. So 12. 100 to 2000 milligrams a day. That's somewhat, that's where you kind of look at as your preventative dose. Now, kind of a more aggressive, moderate dose. If you think you're coming down with something somewhere in between 2000 and 4000 per day. And if you're full blown in bed with super illness, um, if you were in the hospital and it was a nutritionally oriented hospital, they would actually potentially IV you with N acetylcysteine to the order of magnitude of 100 milligrams per kilogram a day, which equates to about 8 grams or 8,000 milligrams, which is 2,000 more than what some viruses are shown to deplete from the body. So it gives you the 6,000 plus an additional 2,000, depending on your weight again, but that's for the average, you know, 150 pound person. Um, so a heavy, uh, a heavy usage, you know, we're talking, you know, 6,000 plus milligrams per day. Um, if you're super sick and you're trying to, you know, reap the potential benefit of what research has shown you might reap. So again, these are levels that you could consider taking. Now, for some people, this higher dose um, you know, what, what may happen is nausea or upset stomach might be the limiting factor and prevent you from being able to get that much in. But what some, so some people, what they do is they look at this and they say, let's take it to tolerance. Let's take it up to this level or to our ability to tolerate it. So maybe you, have, you fall shy at 5,000, your stomach is really upset. You can't handle any more. That's okay. You're still getting some of that in and you're still working yourself toward the potential of protecting yourself. So again, in acetylcysteine, one of the most powerful and one of the most effective ways um, to shorten the duration of a viral infection, but also to help uh, reduce the symptom severity and to reduce the risk of a recurring or redeveloping or recurring. Right now, I can just tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting at about 1500 milligrams a day, um, myself personally, and this is where I will stay until flu season is over, which will be sometime toward the end of March. Um, that's when I'll start kind of coming down off that dose. But this is, you know, again, the preventative dose that you might want to consider if you are looking again to protect yourself from the cold, from the flu, from the potential outbreak of Corona, but also from just the general uh, influence of virus. So, Let's talk a little bit too. I wanted to I wanted to dive into. I said I'd talk just a little bit about L-glutamine because some of you uh, have actually asked me about L-glutamine. So L-glutamine, as we mentioned earlier, is one of the three agents necessary to produce glutathione, which is what your liver uses to detoxify. But glutamine is also the fuel for your lymphocytes, and this is one of, one reason why you might consider also adding L-glutamine to your repertoire of nutritional support. It fuel, the now understand what a lymphocyte is. A lymphocyte is a specialized type of white blood cell that helps you produce antibodies. And so L-glutamine is the primary fuel source for lymphocytes. So what happens when people are sick is they're burning through their L-glutamine more aggressively. Now, N-acetylcysteine helps to preserve glutamine and vice versa. Glutamine helps to preserve N-acetylcysteine. So you know, what a lot of people will do is they'll, they'll take kind of the combination of glutamine and N-acetylcysteine. So if you're looking to add glutamine to support lymphocyte function, we can look at is kind of a dose between two and five grams per day. And my, and my advice would be to start at that lower, at that lower realm of two grams a day and kind of work your way up. Cause one of the things glutamine can do is it can cause, if you take too much too quickly, some people just like with magnesium or just like with too much vitamin C, it can pull water into the bowel and create uh, a loose bowel or diarrhea. So start at that lower level and work your way up to that higher level. Now it's important that when you're taking in acetylcysteine or L-glutamine, 
that you don't take them with a with a big hunk of meat or a big hunk of protein and here's why these are amino acids and so amino acids when you're taking them in free form if you take them by eating a heavy uh, piece of meat or a, or a heavy protein meal what happens is the proteins in that meal will, will the amino acids from the proteins in that meal that you're eating will compete for absorption with the N-acetylcysteine and the L-glutamine. So these gonna, are gonna be best done if you can take them about 30 minutes before you eat that meal. Or if you're just eating a piece of fruit or something um, that's not heavy in protein, you can take these supplements and that would be just fine. But again, if you're, if you're getting ready to sit down to eight ounces of chicken or you know six ounces of beef or something like that, you wanna take these supplements, give yourself kind of a 30 minute prior window to take them or wait a couple hours after that meal to take them. You'll get better absorption out of them if you do that. So again, uh, you can also take them on an empty stomach. So, so again, either way, but just away from that high protein meal is going to get you better effectiveness uh, from, from taking these two things. So on the topic of amino acids, so again, I said before, these are amino acids. Glutamine and N-acetylcysteine are amino acids, AA, amino acids. So this brings me to another point I want to talk about in another strategy, which is your protein level. When you are trying to protect your body, you got to remember that protein is the building block of antibodies. So if you don't have adequate protein coming in, and this I, I see this a lot with long-term vegans where, where cold and flu season where they tend to be more susceptible to a lot of times to to um to picking up problems it's because their protein levels too low to support their body's ability to generate antibodies effectively to be able to fight and defend uh, them from picking up infection so protein levels really important during this time of the year now especially if you work out on a regular basis uh, if you work out on a regular basis kind of the general way to look at your protein need is you need about uh 1.5 to 2 grams of protein um, per kilogram of body weight. Okay, so um, you can determine your pounds if you're in the U.S. and you're trying to figure out kilograms to pounds. Just take take uh, um, kilograms and divide it by 2.2. Or, or rather um, take pounds and multiply it by 2.2 to get the quantity of kilograms and you can figure out 1.5 again 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is is what you're going to need if you're working out rather rather steadily rather aggressively now if you're trying to support your immune system you pretty much need the same quantity especially again if you've been susceptible if you've found yourself sick multiple times one of the reasons the elderly get sick more frequently or at greater risk is not because their immune systems are so terrible it's because their ability to make stomach acid has reduced with age and so they're not as effective at getting the protein the amino acids from the protein from digestion and so what happens is they may eat the, the right amount of protein but they don't digest it as well and so that's going to affect their immune system's capacity for antibody production and that can in, again in turn lead to a, reduct, a reduction in immune capacity so you you you, you know just because you're elderly you got to keep that in mind if you if you aren't getting adequate protein or even if you are getting adequate protein but you suffer with indigestion or you have or you're taking antacids or other drugs that block your ability to digest You've got to kind of adjust for that and make sure uh, make sure that that you don't let your protein levels drop to such a great degree that it starts to impact or affect your immune system. And I would just say, if you are on an antacid, um, it's probably a really terrible idea. One of the reasons they suppress immune function is because they suppress protein absorption. But the second reason why is because when you block stomach acid, a lot of the ways that different viruses, bacteria, and fungal infections get a hold of our body and, and can set in and really start creating problems is if you don't have stomach acid, remember stomach acid serves to kill and neutralize potential pathogens or potential infectious microorganisms. And so without that protein, or rather without that stomach acid, you become more susceptible. So if you're taking any kind of antacid medication, proton pump inhibitor, something like Nexium or Zantac or Tagamet or Prilosec, you know, what you're really doing over a long period of time is you're suppressing your protein absorption capacity, reducing your immune system, but you're also suppressing your stomach acid, reducing one of your body's main tools or weapons against fighting 
against infection. So very important that if you're doing that, you get maybe get with your doctor and say, hey, what, other, what else can we do? Um, because my, my experience around uh, acid reflux is that generally if a person has an irritated GI tract and, and they're taking acid med any acid medications, it's largely a lot of the times is that they're gluten sensitive or they're reacting to one of the foods that they're eating. And so the medicine is just masking the reaction. The reaction is still going on. The medicine is just masking it. So if you change your diet, you can improve uh, the symptoms that you're having without the, having the need to continue to take the medication for the rest of your life. So again, protein, very important during this time of the year, you want to make sure you're getting an ample and adequate amount. So, you know, a lot of people I've talked to this past few weeks, you know, we've looked at their protein levels. You know, what I'm seeing a lot of are people that are taking, you know, they're taking about half this. So they're, they're somewhere around that 0.7 to one gram of protein, and this is a day, right, per kilogram of body weight, and that's not enough to keep your immune system strong for the cold and flu season or to protect you, especially with what we've got going on. So three kind of lessons today. Lesson number one, N-acetylcysteine, it really is a super amino acid for viral uh, for viral issues, so it, it's a great thing to have in your medicine cabinet at home. Number two, making sure uh, that you may consider adding glutamine because it's a fuel for your lymphocytes and also can be very important in terms of helping your immune system function. And number three, your overall protein intake needing to approximate one and a half to two grams per kilogram of body weight during this time of the year, especially those of you maybe following a, a low a low protein diet or a kind of more of a vegan or vegetarian diet where you're just not eating animal proteins and it's a little bit harder sometimes to get the quantity of protein. So, you know, measuring your protein just to kind of see where you're at is a smart thing to do. And if you're under the mark, you might consider a protein supplement. Uh, so again, even those of you that might be following a vegetarian diet, you can use something like ultra protein, which is a, a an organic pea plant-based protein. And those of you maybe aren't, aren't, aren't restricted by a vegetarian diet you want to do like a, a pure beef protein you can use something like ultra pure protein which is a great way to get extra protein in your diet to achieve those levels so supplementally again my three favorite things from a from an amino acid protein perspective is glute acetylcysteine glutamine and actually in making sure your protein count is high enough before i got on the show tonight i actually drank a protein smoothie um, it's just part of my as part of my protein intake for the day. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.